Welcome to another video of the journal series and I hope you are all doing great and today we are just proceeding from where we stopped. We created one journal line that had a balance account number and today we are just completing the process where now we have um, separated this uh, amount into a variable. You are calling it customer payment, you have a customer charge which is 5% of the customer payment and the tax is another 16% of the customer payment as well and then there's another um uh what have i called it payment it should be probably um let me call it a payment let me say um outstanding outstanding payment that will make it more user friendly okay so here is supposed to be customer payment amount okay so we are having the customer payment amount as five thousand and then the charge is the customer payment amount of five percent and then the tax is sixteen percent and then um outstanding customer payment is 750 so in the another thing that i've added or separated is now the amount is no longer had coded but reading from this variable and then we have uh, set the currency code to be blank so that we can be able to uh, have to, to avoid having different currency codes which might cause uh, imbalance in the accounts because the local amount in local currency will be different. If you're posting for several customers with different currencies, it will have an issue. So the other thing now here we need now is to charge. All these is a debit to the customer account. The charge, the tax, and the customer outstanding payment. So we will combine them into one entry. And so at this juncture, I'll just copy all this and then the line number as usual, as we had said earlier, will be automatically added to the next line number and we everything remains the same, the, the template, the batch, the posting date, except the amount. So annual payment and then we just add the charge here to specify that it's a charge then under the amount here we need to pick the customer outstanding payment plus the customer charge then the tax so all these will be combined under one account and then we will we'll not have any balance account so we have now an entry with a debit of all these amount which needs to be redistributed now to all the GLs. So we need some three more entries to just distribute them to the GLs. So it makes it easier when you separate these variables because you know exactly what you're doing. So we need three entries. One, two, three. As usual, you are already appending the line number. We'll start with the outstanding payment. So the outstanding payment uh, was the balancing account type the only thing you're changing is the balancing account type and the description and the balancing account type is supposed to be gl account then the description will be the out payment charge outstanding outstanding payment of which the gl affected is supposed to be the payment gl not the expense then under this balancing account okay this is okay because there's no balancing account number or whatsoever so we have now balanced this with a credit of outstanding payment when i say this is a debit this is supposed to be a positive and this one is supposed to be a credit of the customer outstanding payment And finally, we need to have another credit for the charge. And the charge will go to the fees, income, GL account. And uh, the only thing you're changing is the GL account. And this is the fees, income, GL account. And uh, everything else remains constant. Then Finally, we will have a credit 
to the tax GL account which we specify with the GL account and then we call it the tax GL account and uh, we will be done that is our entry let's just confirm that everything is okay the first entry was the first one that we had done initially which takes up the customer as a credit and uh, the expense GL as the debit GL for that particular purpose and then the second entry we have the customer as a debit here without any balancing account number remember the document number remains to be the same the posting date is the same and finally when we move uh, the more we move uh, to the next entry we have a GL account as a um, credit which will balance with that customer and then another GL account as another credit you can even whichever way uh, another GL account with another credit which is the fees income remember this GL account are specified and then the tax GL account as another credit and we are done. Remember, on the post data item, we can choose either to post on post report. We choose either to post directly or to view the transactions. So the, uh, the thing remaining is to build and run this code so that we can see if everything is all right. In as much as this um, test for our processing of annual payments is concerned. And remember, uh, if you haven't done the previous video and you haven't completed the posting, please go back and do that because uh, it will really help you when you post with one entry before you come to now adding many more entries into your posting. And remember, uh, never give up on these postings. At times, they can be really challenging. You may find a lot of imbalances in the account. The account is not balancing for one reason or another, but you just keep doing it. Repeat until you've get it done change the customer if need be reduce the size of the data set to a smaller data set that you can handle so that you can now uh, make it manageable and here we are with our customer we start with the expense your account and um, which expense just pick any expense and then <coughs> we'll pick the fees as consulting fees and then the tax as the purchase tax and then the payment as the payment uh, whichever discounts and then the document number let me say oct 20 uh, payment let me copy this and uh, ideally i'd like to post directly let me try posting directly and then we try to fetch this if we if for any reason we get an error we'll go to the journal and see whatever error it is and then we'll correct it from there so I'll add 20,000 here as the GL account and then click OK. It's a range. I'm picking from this customer to this customer. So I'm, I, I, don't, I don't have to post for everyone. So when I click OK, I expect it to generate for many customers. And you can see such an error. There's a bill to customer number, which is confusing the system to confirm if everything is okay. And here it is, we are getting the posting done. I think this will work correctly and it has posted correctly. And we can now find the entries or navigate whichever makes, whichever is easier for you. Click search and find entries and the document number that we had pasted is here with us. And we can see that all these entries have been posted in a matter of very few seconds. We have 48 GL entries, 16 customer ledger entries, and 18 detailed customer ledger entries. And when you open on the GL entry, you can see this is the outstanding payment, the GL that we selected. This is the annual payment and, uh, for the sale and, uh, and, and many others. So it's an easy way of automating processes for customers and it really helped them save a lot of time you can imagine if it was to key in all these figures one by one and post them you won't save time for the people but when you do such a thing you can really really have an impact so that's it for this video in the next video i'll show you how to reverse now the entries that we have just posted in case there's a mistake see you there
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.